What's up, class? Thanks for jumping into today's lesson where we're going to take a deep dive into the pillar glitch here in the school zone. I'm back at my new schoolhouse set at Jamaica Plain. And here's a cool factoid for the day. Jamaica Plain is actually a real area in Boston. Not sure if it's considered a town, borough, or just a neighborhood, but it was probably named after the strong trade ties with the real Jamaica when it came to rum running. In fact, Boston is infamous for the great molasses flood of 1919, with molasses, you know, being used to distill rum. Also, if you guys have ever heard of the famous writer and poet Sylvia Plath, she came from Jamaica Plain. Also, real quick, I made some small upgrades to the set that I'll show you real quick. So I added the Nixie Tubes, which in case you didn't know, stands for the episode number in the No Mod Shop Glass Limited series. And oh, and I also added uh, a shelf with hard hats. So, you know, in case students forget to bring theirs from home, they can borrow one from the glass. <laughs> added a pipe wrench up here. Uh, it's not a junk item, it's actually a weapon. Otherwise, I would have remembered to put it on this table in the last video. But yeah, so it's been added to the set. And what else? Oh, I added the Slocum's Joe coffee sign there because it's right beside the little coffee table. So maybe they're sponsoring our class or something. I don't know. Or, you know, whatever uh, vault dweller emerged and has rebuilt that franchise. <laughs> All right, and I imagine I'll probably get some good suggestions from you guys in the previous video comments as well. So I'll incorporate those as we're moving along. All right, well, let's get into today's lesson. In my recent Gun Tower video, a viewer named Daxers asked if I could show how to rebuild the castle walls without mods. That is actually the perfect place to demonstrate the concepts behind today's lesson. So although I just built this new set here, we're going to take a field trip class over there for today's video. So hop on the school bus and I'll meet you guys over there. <laughs> All right, we are at the castle. So over a year ago, I posted a video about how I didn't want to join the Minutemen and I showed you a clever way to claim the castle as well as the armory without the need for the Minutemen. In fact, in my trivia walkthroughs, they're still sitting in the Museum of Freedom. That way I don't have to keep responding to Preston's every whim, you know what I mean? So check out those videos if you're doing a new playthrough. I also gave some cool factoids about the real world castle in Boston in that video. It's funny too, because when I made that video, I wasn't very good at distinguishing between the rug glitch and the group select feature. So I sort of conflated them. If I were to remake that video, there wouldn't be any need to fast travel out of this uh, armory over here because I could have just moved the mat further under the door with more rugs and then repurposed it from the other side. You'll know what I mean if you watch that video. Still a really clever video, but I've come a long way with building since that got posted. The reason I mention that is because without the Minutemen to clear the ground clutter, you'll need to cover the eggshells with some floor foundations if you want to make this place look nice. I haven't really gotten around to building anything at the castle yet, but maybe I will after today's video. I also mention that video because the pillar glitch is actually a subset of another workshop feature called group selection. I'll go over that briefly for aspiring builders so the pillar glitch will make sense and then we'll get into some of the more complex ways you can use it like repairing the walls of the castle in one fell swoop. Okay, so let me show you about the group selection feature and we will use the, we'll use the crate and the toolbox like I used in the rug glitch video just to show you the difference between the two. Okay, so we have a wooden crate, and then if we wanted to move the crate and the toolbox as if it was the rug glitch, we would pop the toolbox up on top of the crate. All right, that way, when I move the crate, the toolbox moves with it. That's not the group selection feature. That's actually a function of the rug glitch, or, you know, it's not a glitch. I think I called it the contiguity exploit in that video. But you guys get the idea. So the difference is, is that I'm going to take the toolbox off of this crate and I'm going to set it down right beside it. So now these move separately, but because they're within close proximity of each other, if I select one, it will group select the other. The way you do that is by holding down the select key, which is usually the A on an Xbox, I think X on a PS4. All right, see how they both got highlighted? On your screen, it might be green if you're using the default HUD colors. So now these are moving as a group. All right, this is not the same thing as the rug glitch. All right, this is called the group selection feature. And this, of course, isn't a glitch. It's made so that you can build a whole bunch of stuff as a group 
and then carry it over as one solid group to another area in your settlement where maybe you don't have as much space to build or something like that, you know? But they purposely made this a feature within the workshop. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because the pillar glitch is a subset of this feature. So let me store these real quick. And I'm gonna bring out, we'll bring out the, the concrete blocks. It's gonna be under floors. Tell you what, let's do it with the wood ones. We'll be using these anyway. So I'm gonna set down this shack foundation. And did you see, as soon as I snapped it in place, another one wanted to be built and it snapped directly adjacent to it. So this snapping feature, just like the group selection feature, is one of the purposeful features in the workshop to make your life easy. So if I want to set this shack foundation really close, but not have it snap, there's not really a way to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, I, like let's say I want to leave a little gap, just like create like an arrow slit or something through there where nobody can fit through, but you can see through there. It's just not possible. But with the group selection feature, it is possible because one of the functions of the group select feature is to turn off the snapping of workshop items that snap. All right, so we've got this shack foundation. It's hard to build on these some of the scrappiness, you know. If I had time, I would have set down an entire floor foundation and covered those things up. Anyway, I'm going to set down this shack foundation. And then I'm going to go back and grab, like, uh, that crate again. Or, you know, toolbox, that'll work. Okay, now the toolbox doesn't have a snapping feature. So by group selecting the toolbox and the foundation itself, I can now, let me push this forward. I can now set this down where I want to without it snapping automatically. So that's one of the original and really useful features of the group selection technique, you know, besides just being able to build a bunch of stuff in a, a group together and then move it as one group. So hopefully that makes sense and that can explain it. See, it's not snapping now, and if I wanted to give it just a tiny little gap there to point your gun through it, just to explain the point there, all right? So, we store the toolbox, I select the shack foundation, and it's gonna instantly snap right in place, which we love. We love the snapping feature, of course, but sometimes you don't want it, and that's where the group selection technique comes in really handy. Okay, now what is the pillar glitch? Well, see how this shack foundation can sink into the ground, all right? You can group select things by starting off selecting something that's submersible, like the shack foundation, and then you can actually cause the other items in the group to sink into the ground with it, all right? So this time, let me set this down and then set the... Uh, Toolbox down again. Haven't tested this, so I don't know if it'll work, but this time I'm gonna select the shock foundation. Oh, I was too close. Let's move this one a little farther away. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna select the shock foundation here. And now I can sink the shack foundation into the ground and that toolbox is going with it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why I'd want to do that because it's just going to hide the toolbox underground. But what this does is it opens up a lot of possibilities for creative building. So now why is it called a pillar glitch? Well, originally early fallout builders were using this technique with probably the wood floor foundation uh, because they can see through, you know, the posts there. And then others found this one was even a little more narrow, but it's still pretty thick, you know, it still has kind of a wide profile. So, you know, this wasn't the best thing to use, but when Wasteland Workshop came out, they introduced the concrete and within the concrete section of the walls, 
you have a single pillar, all right, which is submersible on purpose. This isn't a glitch or anything. And so you can get creative with your building. And this has an even narrower horizontal profile. And by the way, that's the same reason rugs were used with the so-called rug glitch, because they have the narrowest of the vertical profiles. But uh, really anything that can sink can be used with this exploit, you know? You could use stairs, as long as they're the type of stairs that can sink into the ground. So I could, well, the concrete foundation is going to sink anyway, so that's, this isn't the best example. But if I were to want to sink something in the ground and I had some stairs already built and I was low on resources or whatever, I could grab the stairs and use the stairs to sink objects. So now you're starting to see why this technique is not really a glitch. It's taken advantage of a feature that's already available. So really, it's more of an exploit. In fact, you know, I came up with a creative name for the rug glitch, called it the contiguity exploit. You know, perhaps a better name for the pillar glitch would be something like the non-snapping submersible proximity exploit, you know? But just like the rug glitch, that's never gonna catch on because it's too long-winded and people just prefer to say the pillar glitch. So even though it doesn't have to be used with pillars and even though it's not a glitch, you know, that name will probably be around for a while. But as long as you know that it's not really a glitch and it doesn't have to be used with pillars, then that allows you to expand your thinking outside of the box. And you can start to come up with more creative ways to find submersible objects and use them in combination with this technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to repair this wall. I won't do the whole castle, but we'll do this wall right here using this technique and I won't be using pillars at all. I'll be using another variation that I found that's even more useful, and I'll explain that why. But, you know, I like to build during a sunny day, so I'm just gonna go run in and hop on a mattress real quick, and then I'll be back when we get those toasty rays shining down on us. Okay, I'm back. All right, much, much better. Now, there's two ways that you can go about repairing the walls. You can do it one at a time and probably even get away without having to use the pillar glitch by just snapping, you know, I think these shack foundations kind of match the color of the normal brick walls there. So if you wanted to, you could snap one of these. I'm going to try to get it close. <laughs> there. Okay, so you can snap one into place and then the rest will snap into place as well. So you could go snap, snap, snap across. And then these won't build underneath here. They won't snap down underneath. See that one right there, we'll probably have to use the pillar glitch for that one because it's not snapping. But they won't snap under here either. Now you could just find a nice point and try to match where it goes, but uh, there is another little clever trick, and that is to add a shack stairwell. Now there's other items that'll do this for you, but when you add this shack stairwell, see how it actually leaves a little lip down there underneath? This was probably done intentionally, See, there's two layers of roof up there, so it drops this down and allows it to either snap to the bottom or snap to the top. Now, with that extra lip allowance there, you can grab the floors and snap them right to it. And then once you get that one in place, then the rest will snap right next to it, okay? So that's one way to go about it, and you're going to have to do the other side as well. But there is actually a little bit of an easier way. And by the way, you'll have trouble with this area right here and this area right here, and you'll end up having to pillar glitch them in anyway. So by learning the pillar glitch technique, uh, you'll actually be uh, killing two birds with one stone. Actually, I hate that saying, I'm an animal lover. So instead we'll say save two birds with one stone. And by the way, you know how you save two birds with one stone? 
Well, you're out in the forest, you see a hunter about to shoot two birds, you grab a stone, you throw the stone at the tree where the birds are perched, they fly away. You didn't hit the hunter, but you prevented him from killing the birds. So there you go. There's my little Aesop's fable for the day. <laughs> I know I'm a goofy dude, but I don't mind. Okay, so let's uh, save two birds and one stone. We'll store these. So what we're going to do is build the entire wall first and then just group select it all into place. Okay. Now I happened to test this out previously. It worked perfectly. And I found that having five by two rows was the perfect amount. Okay. One, two, three four, five. Perfect. And let's go around here. Okay. And then we'll use our little shack stairwell technique. Bada bing, bada boom. Oops, <laughs> I didn't want it there. That's okay. Because now that'll snap into place and I can just grab this one and move it over here. Okay, so we have our entire wall set up here and we are going to pillar glitch it in there. But I wanted to show you this real quick. I forgot to mention this a second ago. Here's a good example of a creative use of the group selection feature, okay? So I have taken a bunch of spiked raider poles, and I don't even think I need the pillar glitch for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to select one, it's gonna group select them all, and then from here, I can actually, uh, Let me lower it down here. It just pops right back up. Now this, I don't know if I'd call it a glitch, but this is one problem with group selecting. If anybody knows a reasonable way to uh, keep these things from popping back up again, see as soon as I let go, it's gonna pop up. So I'm going to deselect and try again. I don't know why it does that. So, like I said, if there's any good builders out there that know a solution so that it doesn't do that, then I could probably learn something from you guys. But here was the point, okay? I'm gonna group select these, and then I'm gonna push it away so I can see a little bit farther. Try to bring it down. Okay, maybe if I select one on the edge, that's what I did during the test. I selected one on the edge here. Okay, I don't know, but it's still gonna work. All right, so we just won't be able to see it very easily. Darn, darn, darn. <laughs> okay, so let me try this again. All right, so that's reasonable enough. I can still see what's going on here. Okay, so the point is, is that with those spiked raider poles placed separately from each other, but within close enough proximity that they can be group selected, you can actually create a little portcullis. And see, I don't even need to pillar glitch this in here because uh, they fit naturally. I might put them here actually to turn this area right here into a little murder hole, <laughs> you know? Maybe create a bunch of pressure plates in here that will uh, close the door off and uh, turn on a bunch of traps. That would be kind of fun. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this in place here. Boom, and now you have a little portcullis in the castle. Pretty cool. Of course, if you wanted to get out through this way yourself, you would have to select them and then uh, push through it, just like I showed you in my tips video. Group select, run through it, deselect, and they're back into place. Your settlers will be trapped in here, though, so you might want to create another entrance or exit through one of these other places here. But anyway, let's move on. Actually, it's gotten foggy, so through the power of editing, I will be back when it's a little more sunny. 
Okay, we are back. So, we are ready to place this into this gap. All right, now for the longest time, I was using the pillar. So this is the item that most people started off using. Okay, so we've selected the whole block here. All right. So I'm gonna push this forward. That's as far as I can push it forward. And then I'm going to try to raise it up and down. And actually, wow, that actually works. <laughs> I'm surprised. But the reason that I don't use this pillar anymore is because it does have a very narrow horizontal profile, but it doesn't have a lot of height. And there's some other items in your workshop that are actually even a little thinner. So if we can find an item that's thinner and higher, even better, because then you can see through it. Now, for a long time, I was using those uh, spiked poles which you saw here. Those work pretty well too. But I found another item that's even better than that. And that is in the scaffolding section, which came from Contraptions DLC or Wasteland Workshop. I'm pretty sure it's Contraptions. So this is the one I like to use right here. See how tall it is? All right, I'm gonna set it down right here. So that one is pretty tall. And the cool thing is about this one is that you can actually sink it down before you even group select it. And then when you group select something, you can raise it up as high as it will go, you know, before leaving the ground. Now, one of the restrictions about the group selection technique and thus the pillar glitch is that it doesn't operate the same way as the rug glitch. So it doesn't exactly ignore collision. It does to a certain extent, but not truly the way that the rug glitch does. So when you're trying to place an item, if the original item that you've group selected won't fit or is being blocked by something, then you won't be able to place the item down. That goes for everything in the chain. Now, what do I mean by the chain? Well, this scaffolding frame is perfect, but you still have to get kind of close to it and <laughs> raise it up and raise it down and it still has some limitations. So just like we set down a group of rugs, you know, like you'll often see me set down like two or three rugs before I place the item that I want to rug glitch on it, we can do the same thing with this group selection technique vis-a-vis -vis the pillar glitch, all right? So once again, we're trying to create a scenario where we can easily see through whatever we're group selecting so we can make those fine tune adjustments. But wouldn't it be great if we could move it from a little farther back and have a greater perspective? And the reason why this is important is because if you're trying to pillar glitch something or group select something into an area where you've got other things that are already built within proximity and you try to make adjustments the way you can make adjustments with the rug glitch, it's going to group select the entire area that's within proximity, whether that includes floors, walls, other decorative items that you've put up, furniture, and then you won't be able to make those fine tune adjustments. Now, in the case of this wall here, anything that comes with the territory, so to speak, anything that's considered an original foundation won't be group selected. So I could place this grouping here, push it forward a little bit, say I do something like that, and I realize uh, I can move it a little closer, cover up those walls some more. Then I could just select this again and pull it back, push it forward and make another adjustment. So in this case, it would actually work. But let's suppose that I had placed down the foundation of floors that I talked about earlier. If I wanted to then make those adjustments, I wouldn't be able to because this would be touching that floor foundation and the entire area would get selected. So, let me group select this back out again. Okay. All right, I should have quick saved there. Got to remember to quick save. I could have just reloaded if that wasn't going down. Okay, so what we want to do is create a better visual depth. And what I found really useful is using the conduits. I always forget what DLC these came from. I'll put a little pop-up for you. But 
see these longer conduits here? All right, these can create a group selection feature that allows you to move this initial structure, the initial submersible structure a little farther back. All right, this is my favorite technique now. I've been using this for, I don't know, like half a year, and it's just awesome. As a matter of fact, you can even do things like this. Let me move this back out. Because remember, like I said earlier, being able to place items is going to be dependent on whether any items in the stack, so to speak, can be placed naturally. So if we were to have this flat on the ground and I wanted to sink this uh, wall a little further in the ground, it wouldn't really be able to that easily. I might luck out. You know, I lucked out with the toolbox earlier, but it might not work so well with some of these features. So what I can do is I can set this farther back bring the scaffolding frame down, sink the scaffolding frame down, group select just those two items, raise this back up again, then move it towards the wall. <laughs> now that's gonna be stuck in place. And now I can actually sink the scaffolding frame a little further and I have a way to see the Shack Foundation stack here from a little farther back. And you can create a chain of conduits as far back as you want. I call this the chassis because, uh, well, let me give you a good example, all right? Here I've created, just for the fun of it, I weave this around here just to show you what can be done. But uh, I place this uh, Shack Foundation to block entrance in that area not like i do that but just to show you an example and i can select the scaffolding frame and this entire little chassis that came with it is going to move so now i can raise this up you know like let's say i wanted to i don't know what i want to do with it well you know like if i was building over here like say i wanted to fill in that one gap using the old method you know now the reason it's not working there is because I have the conduit snaking around to the right. If I had them snaking around to the left, then it would work. But you, you guys get the idea. And then also, you have to make sure that whatever you're placing in the ground will work as well. So anyway, that's just a good example of what I mean by the chassis. Because it kind of creates a group of items that have a really narrow profile, and you can see through them very easily. Now, in this case, we'll just see if this will work. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add one more in there just to just to be safe. Okay, now let's give it a whirl. Worked perfectly in my test. Don't fail me now. <laughs> okay, and the great thing about this is that you can push it even farther out, and it's gonna fill in both sides at once. You don't have to go back around to the back side, and. Uh, Do it all over again. Okay. See how much easier that is to see? Actually, I'm going to reselect it to prevent that popping up here. And then push it all the way out. Bring it down. Okay. And let's give it a try. And this way you can really line up the walls and get them. Oh man, it's still giving me that wrong perspective. Okay, now we can see what we're doing. All right, so. What we're going to do is we're going to get the walls to line up. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit out all my finagling so I can make sure we get this right and I can show you guys exactly what's going on here. Okay, I'm back. For some reason, I was having trouble with the conduit, so I just got rid of the conduit. The conduit works on most surfaces, 
the castle here is a little tricky because of all of the uh, rubble on the ground. So uh, you might have some difficulty using the conduit here. But you can see why I was wanting to use it because I can see the left part of the screen, but I can't see the right part of the screen. And the only way I could fit this in here, you know, is by having the uh, scaffolding a little bit on the left side where there isn't as much rubble. You see that little gap in there of the rubble? So that's where I had to fit the scaffolding. Because remember, the group select technique isn't the rug glitch. It doesn't uh, refocus the priority onto the back object. They have to be able to work in unison, okay? So I'm gonna pop this into place. Oh, did not mean to do that. <laughs> Hopefully it'll just pop back into place. Perfect. Okay, so you can see now we've done a pretty good job of getting it really flush uh, and closing. You know, these are obviously meant to stick out to look like they're kind of scrappy there. But yeah, I think that's a pretty good job, you know, and you can see it's flush with the ground. Oh, that looks really nice. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for today's lesson. Hope this helped you out. In the next video, I'll show you how to combine today's trick with the previous video I did about the rug glitch to create a seamless wiring technique. You know, each new video is building on the previous videos. That's why I wanted to go in order. But, you know, we're moving on to some of those intermediate techniques now with the Blue Square Lessons. Be sure to throw a like in the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time on The School Zone. Happy building and class dismissed.